This is all you know. This is all you show. This is all you know. Welcome to video one in the Create Music Inside of Cubase Elements video series. In this first video, I've gone to the Steinberg website and I've downloaded and installed the free 30-day trial of Cubase Elements. So everything I'm showing you today is actually free for at least 30 days. I've also gone to the VST sound instrument sets on the Steinberg webpage and I've downloaded and installed the free trial of Neuro Mindset. This is an expansion pack that loads into Groove Agent SE4, which is included inside of Cubase Elements. I've been asked to come up with a chorus hook line for a friend of mine who's a hip hop artist. And I'm gonna use the chord track to come up with the chords and build a nice little track around this hook. I'm a singer songwriter and I normally write with guitar or piano. So I feel a little bit out of my depth here writing with Cubase Elements, but that's all part of the challenge. And I'm looking forward to seeing exactly what I can achieve. I'm using a Shure SM7B dynamic microphone, but there are plenty of affordable condenser microphones if that's the kind of thing you're looking for. The advantage of using this Shure microphone is it's quite directional and I don't pick up a lot of the background noise because I am recording in my little project studio in an apartment. My audio interface is a Steinberg UR44. All of the UR range have direct monitoring, so there's never any latency between when you press a note and when you hear it in your headphones. The other neat thing about the UR range is you can also use it with an iPad for remote location recording. I'm also using a Nectar Impact LX25 MIDI controller. The neat thing about these little guys is they come factory mapped to things like the transport or different commands inside of Cubase. I'm quickly running through my gear list because I want to make the point that none of the gear I'm using here is really high-end or expensive gear. I'm good to go with this trial version. The first thing I always try to do when I start a new project in Cubase is to save as and name the project. If anything should happen while I'm recording the project, I'll always know where it's stored and I'll know what it's called and I'll be able to find the backup files very quickly. It's time to write some music. So I'm going to go and add a drum track, and I'm using Groove Agent SE4, which comes inside of Elements. I write music in different ways depending on which day it is, but I'm not a drummer, and I quite like Groove Agent SE4 because it comes with kits and patterns. So you can load the kits by right mouse clicking on the beat agent, and now it's a matter of using the filters to look through all of the content that you have available to you. One great thing about the Steinberg VST sound instrument sets is they do show up inside of the browser, so it's really easy to find your way around any new content. Once I've loaded up a patch, I can click on the individual instrument pads to hear the individual instruments, and I can go in and edit those instruments. But for now, I'm going across to the pattern page. I'm not really sure what I'm looking for. I'm just trying a few different things. That's pretty cool. I love writing this way because you never know what's going to come out. When I find a pattern I like, I just drag it and drop it straight over into my project window. And now I can hold down Alt and pick up on the bottom corner and copy it over. That's not the most graceful copy and paste I've ever done, but I got there. I really like that offset tom part. And also the fact that it's nice and sparse. Groove Agent SE4 is an incredibly powerful piece of software. There's so much potential for shaping individual sound. To shape a sound, you click on a pad, and over on the right hand side, you can start editing individual parameters like volume, pan, pitch, even things like adding distortion or adding filters over the top of a sound. You can also edit the sample up in the sample window. So that's just changed a little bit. But I'm looking for a bit more space, so I'm going to add an auxiliary send and come over here to the auxiliary section and add a reverb. Yeah, that's cool. Just dropping the mix back a little bit so it's not swimming in the reverb. And now we have a nice, open, sparse groove that's ready for me to put a vocal hook over the top of. So, I need some chords. 
I was pleasantly surprised to see that the chord track is included in the feature set of Cubase Elements. This is one of the greatest songwriting or compositional tools inside of a door. To be able to use the chord track, we first of all need to go and create a track to monitor the chords that we're going to compose. Now you can load third party VST instruments into Cubase Elements, but I'm using Hellion Sonic SE. Once the instrument loads up, click on the triangle to the right of the first slot and we can now start browsing for a preset. Once again, I'm surprised because Hellion Sonic SE Trip is showing up and this is one of my favorite instruments. You just click on the name of a patch on the right hand side and you can start previewing it. If you've got a MIDI keyboard, you can play the notes on the external MIDI keyboard. I'm after quite a sparse sound to go with these drums. That's pretty good. So I'm gonna double click on it and it loads up. Now down at the bottom on the left hand side, you can see these pads and they contain chords. Now this is a great tool if you're not the world's greatest piano player because you can take a snapshot of a chord and use that pad to trigger that chord. So you're playing three notes with one finger. You can also rename the pads, which is pretty handy if you're changing chords. Speaking of chords, we are discussing the chord track. So I'm going back to the chord track I'm right mouse clicking to get my tool set and I'm selecting a pencil and now I'm entering boxes or X's. You can turn your snap on and off to make sure that the boxes are going exactly where you want them to. Mine is set to beats so my boxes are going exactly where I want them to. I've gone back to my arrow tool and now I'm going over to set the monitor track. So there's a little box on the track listing. If we click on that I can go down to that Hellion Sonic track that I created before. Now I double click on an X and it's time to get creative. Straight away I've got the circle of fists. Now I went to a conservatorium to learn about the circle of fists and it took years and here it is inside of Cubase. To keep it simple, anything in close proximity inside of the circle of fists should work in a composition. So all of these chords go well together. That first chord in my project window changes every time I click on a different chord. You can also go across to the editor and just play a chord on a MIDI keyboard and it will tell you what that chord is. That means that you've got the circle of fists to give you some chord suggestions and you've also got the editor which lets you start the creative process and you don't even need to know the notes or the chord that you're playing. Use the arrow keys on your keyboard to scroll through the chords in your project window and then you use the mouse and your ears to find something that you like. That really works for me, and I've come up with a chord progression that I might not have come up with. Now I'm drawing a rectangle around the chords, and I'm holding down Alt, and I'm copying and pasting them in exactly the same way I would copy and paste any other event in the project window. Just gonna go in and shape the sound again. I noticed I've included the channel strip into Cubase Elements, but I wasn't expecting to see the Alan Morgan channel strip presets included. And this is great, because there's generally something included in these presets that sounds really good for a specific instrument or even a musical genre. Now you may not be a technically minded person, you might like to use your ears. So these channel strip presets are a great place to start shaping your sound. As are the parameters inside a Halley and Sonic SE. Cutoff and resonance is always a great place to start. Also the delays and the reverbs inside a Halley and Sonic SE2 are really good. And you can add a sense of space sometimes just by dialing up the reverb or the delay. As we start to build this track, it's going to get a little busy out here in the project window. So it's always good to name your tracks as you go and keep things organized. The chord track's quite important, so I've moved it up to the top of my track list. I'm going to take some time out to get the chord track to control some more synth instruments on this track. Once I've got the synth instruments, I'm going to go and find another Alan Morgan preset for them. And I'm also going to go and find an Alan Morgan preset to shape my drum groove that I've got going. In the next video, we're going to get our hands dirty and record some instruments and a simple vocal hook. We're going to let chord pad and life transform do all the heavy work. 
chorus in terms of the recording. And we're going to use quite a few doubling techniques to really build a full vocal chorus sound. So stay tuned, I'll see you in the next video. This is all you know. This is all you show. This is all you know.